I have officially hit six months of using Adapalene, specifically the La Roche-Posay Efficlar Adapalene 0.1% Gel. In today's video, I want to tell you all about what it's been like to use this over the past six months, and specifically on my skin type, which is dry, acne prone, and a little bit sensitive. You see, this video is actually really important to me because I've noticed that some people say a dappling 0.1%, that's, that's nothing. That's the easiest product in the world to use. And it has not been that for me. It has admittedly been difficult. I'm gonna talk about how I only use it about twice a week, show you the whole routine as well. Um, but yeah, the reality is it has been difficult. I have experienced dryness and yet, I'm also going to honestly tell you this has been the best thing I've ever done for my acne. Are the best things in life ever easy? Are they ever easy, right? This is going to be a PM routine. I suppose I will do the thing I always do where there's timestamps and links to all of these products in the description box below, but I feel like there's really no way that I can avoid making this another one of those videos where I'm talking about Adapalene throughout the video instead of just in the section where I show you applying it because yeah, it, there's there's a little bit to it. There's, there's a little bit more to it that I think you should know. And one more thing I have to tell you all, I cannot believe it's been six months. I actually truly cannot. I sat down and thought about it and went, oh, okay, so I started Adapalene in February. It is now August. That's eight minus two. That's that's six. Ended up running some very intense mathematical calculations of the March, April, May, June, July, August variety. I feel like what's going on is 2020 was the longest year of any of our lives and, you know, the universe finds balance. So because of that, 2022 is just going way too fast and I sincerely object. I'm gonna be 70 tomorrow at this rate. What is going on? Time slow the heck down. Slow down. Slow down. We got a whole routine to get into. I've got to remove the makeup. So for once, I'm gonna try to actually take you into the bathroom and in front of the sink, we'll do this. But I'm going to kind of speed through it because this isn't necessarily something you would need to do unless you also wear makeup. I'll use the Lancome Bifacile to remove my eye makeup. And then I got this in PR recently, the Uma by Sharon C. I love the Uma brand. Uh, this is a new oil-based cleanser at Walmart for under $10. And then I'm gonna follow with the Tatcha Rice Wash, which is absolutely an amazing product. It's like a very gentle physical exfoliator, very gentle in a cream cleanser. So let's go do that and then we'll come back here. I'm back. I'm going to use my Indie Lee Coenzyme Q10 toner really quickly here. Oh. I love it so much. Y'all know I've always been a fan of spray toners. I feel like I'm even more of a fan since I started Dappling. What I absolutely have noticed is that uh, the motion of wiping my skin, even with a, a gentle cotton pad, can actually start to irritate it. Like my threshold for sensitivity is lower and especially since I just double cleansed, I definitely would prefer to use a spray toner over anything else. Yeah, in fact, I actually really wanna say, um, if you are struggling with your skin barrier or if you're struggling with a retinoid, I would definitely like to remind everyone that double cleansing is something that is optional in a lot of circumstances. It may even be optional with makeup. I had a lot of makeup on today, so I of course wanted to double cleanse. It's been so interesting. You know, I've been following skincare content for, oh my gosh, like 10 years. And I remember when double cleansing kind of blew up as a skincare trend. The reason it started is because, uh, you know, people were advocating for double cleansing instead of using makeup wipes. But it feels like everything has this tendency to 
almost get out of control so that people forget you don't have to double cleanse every single night. I just wanted to put that out there, try to get a little bit more balance back into the skincare world. And just so you know, you don't have to use the cleansers that I did, but relatedly, since starting Adapalene, I found that, uh, you know, prior to this, I already didn't like foaming cleansers. Now, again, I like them even less. <laughs> so it's something that's, even if it's a physical exfoliator, as long as it's not too harsh and too foamy on my skin, it seems to work. But yeah, you, you don't have to spend that much. I just coincidentally am really enjoying this one. So I am going to use my Dr. Dennis Gross LED mask tonight because I want to use both red and blue light. I've just made a video about uh, all of my thoughts on LED if you're interested. What I like about this is that it's not another product to add into my routine and I feel like in particular, I really truly feel that LED helps with inflammation. Oh yeah, it's probably difficult to take me seriously with this. I'll be back, I'll run this twice and I will be right back. I love LED. I absolutely love my LED mask. I feel like I'm I'm tired now. It, it makes me, it puts me in this correct mentality for sleeping. It's amazing. To move on to a much less expensive product, let me make sure I use my Ordinary Buffet tonight. So just gonna dab this on onto my forehead. I think the rest of my face is, is probably fine. We can skip that just right on my forehead. We are on to the night cream step and yet we're not done with this routine. The Versed Recovery Mode Advanced Night Cream tonight, which is a lovely purple product. I have not forgotten my Adapalene step. I'm going to do it after moisturizer because I am doing the Adapalene sandwich method. Uh, originally, when I put out my first video talking about Adapalene, I was really struggling. I really was. I could only use it once a week. I was using it exactly as directed, which is with this long waiting period between your serum or toner or whatever step you do before the uh, Adapalene and it just took so long and I felt like my skin was really getting sensitive. It is astounding that I don't feel like this method has me losing any of the potency. Not a single bit of the potency is lost and yet this seems to slow down the release of the Adapalene into my skin so that my skin can tolerate it better. I mean really if you take nothing else from this video then that, that is the best tip. That is the best tip. Again, I started once a week and now I'm up to twi twice a week. <laughs> Man, look at this. The Ordinary's Buffet is so grumpy with other products. You see how it's, can you see that it's pilling right here? It's such a grumpy product, but whatever, I'm going to bed, who really cares? And I got this little sample in my Sephora order. I picked the Tula Eye Recharge and Replenish. So we'll try this out tonight. Oh, it does have a seal, that's nice. I'm kind of applying a heavy layer. This doesn't have any actives that I would need to be concerned about. So I will uh, make sure it's on my eye area thick and then we're gonna use the Adapalene. Y'all ready? Are you ready for the Adapalene? Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze out a pea-sized amount and then I am spreading it through three fingers here. Try to get an even amount. And here we go, applying it here in particular and then on my forehead as well because, hey, there is preliminary evidence that Adapalene may help with anti-aging. So even though it's been difficult to transition into Adapalene, I am telling you, I get it now. I totally understand why some people just swear up and down by Adapalene or, or Tret for what it's worth. You know, I have these, these little recovering pimples right now, right? They're almost at the end of their cycle. This is where I would be, in general, putting on something like uh, drying lotion or uh, some kind of patches overnight, and I just genuinely don't need them anymore. The nights that I use Adapalene, it is amazing how much by the next morning, any acne on my skin looks better. I did not know that was gonna happen. I did not know this, and for the record, Im immediately after starting Adapalene, that doesn't happen. It took several months to get to that point. But again, it's so worth it. It has been so worth it. Even though I'm sitting here telling you, you know, it has been difficult. There have been days I've dried my skin out. It's still way worth it. I think it's gonna be most helpful if I give you kind of a, a timeline of what to expect, or at least what happened on my skin. So for the first, 
two weeks. It was like nothing happened. I feel like this could be a, a dangerous phase where, especially if you're using that pea-sized amount, you could think, maybe I need more. Maybe I need to be using this every night, maybe you know, a, a larger amount of it. Definitely don't do that. By week three, that's when I started to see changes in my skin and not in a good way. I definitely went through the adapalene purge. I definitely had more pimples in this period of time than I started with, but that makes sense because retinoids increase your skin's turnover. So if you were gonna have pimples, they're gonna come to the surface even faster. And that lasted from probably about week three to six for me, maybe even a little bit longer. But then that's when you actually start to see the results. That's when you start to see your skin clearing, and I'm telling you by month two or three, that's where it's it's almost magical. It, it, it almost is. Who's responsible for that quote that says, uh, you know, everything seems like magic until you scientifically prove it? I feel like I, that's what adapalene has been like. It, it really has been something where if I didn't know this was science, I, I would think this was sorcery. Now, all that said, you know, it might not work for every person. It's definitely not something to consider if you are pregnant. There's, there's surely other conditions where it's not for you. And I want to make sure to say that because I think that given my own experience, I can see why people might become very, very enthusiastic about adapalene. Yeah, it's been difficult, but it's been worth it. Have I said this several times throughout this video? You may get the point by now. Anyway, I'm going to finish my routine with the Suwasu Overnight Revitalizing Mask. Overnight Vitalizing Mask. I keep saying it incorrectly and feeling like a goober. I absolutely love the smell of this, y'all. I love this hanbang scent. Oh, I love it. I'm gonna finish off this routine with some lip balm because that is actually something I don't feel like I've seen anyone talk about, but my lips have been more dry. So I'm gonna use, this was gifted in PR also, but I have fallen in love with it. This is the Alpen Willow and Sweet Agave Plumping Lip Mask. This is a really nice lip mask. It stays on all night. I wonder if I should start doing lip balm before adapalene. I probably should, shouldn't I? That would make sense. Might be getting some transfer of it onto my lips. Yeah, do that. I, I can't believe I'm six months into this and just had this revelation, but nobody's perfect. And my friends, that is the end of the video. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time.